Hey, it's B-Man here at the Beachy Show Hideaway. I hope everybody's having a, a good day. I've had a lot of requests about uh, the different foods that I make down here, and one of them is, uh, what's that recipe for your tamales? And uh, it's it's pretty, pretty simple to do, but uh, it's easier for me to kind of show you some of the things that I do. And so I'll put this little series together, and hopefully uh, you get an idea, because some of the things I end up doing is I make the chicken tamales uh, with green chili. I make pork green chili tamales. I make red chili, uh, beef, tamales, uh, and I make uh, some pork uh, red chili that I've got right now that I'm cooking. So I just want to give everybody an idea of some of the different things that I use. And uh, I, I mean, a, a, one of the ones I tried this year was a uh, Thanksgiving one, which went over really well. So I'll be probably doing another series on that. But let me just give you an idea of some of the ingredients that I use and show you what we got. So here we go. All right, let's talk about some of the ingredients that I use. Um, right now I've got some beef in here, and that's gonna be turned into some uh, beef red chili. So I'm gonna let that beef probably cook itself for a good uh, 24 hours, get it nice and tender. Um, all that broth, what do I add in the broth? You know what, it's kind of what you want, but I use uh, pepper to taste, uh, sugar, uh, not sugar, but salt, um, and I use a little bit of, I guess, some other spice I put in there. I've got some onions that I'll end up putting in there, but that broth, you don't want to get rid of it because that's what I use for my masa, and that's very, very important. Uh, let me see, right over here in this pot, I've got, that is my red chili pork. I'll be making tamales later today on that because uh, I've already got a, a big old request, but basically, I just took pork, cooked it like I did the beef, let it cook real good and then uh, of course I added the salt and pepper some garlic you know kind of get a taste to it then I drain that and I'll show you what I uh, the gravy or the the, uh, the juice I got from all of that uh, that I'll use in my masa and then what will happen here is as this is cooking it's kind of done right now I'm just gonna let it kind of cool down now but I added after I got all the juice off of it uh, I took some red chili, and I'll show you those here in just a minute, what I use, and then I just added that again to taste, maybe a little bit more salt and pepper, and uh, that's what you see right now. That's going to be really good in the tamale. So that gives you an idea of what uh, I've done with the meat. Again, a lot of it is just cooking it in a pan and letting it do its thing, let it kind of just kind of marinate in that little bit of... Uh, juice that goes on there and uh, but that'll be used for the, the masa so let me I'll go to uh, a few other things here real quick so let me I'll show you some of the ingredients that we have first of all for the red chili I use a Cervantes and that's from New Mexico you can make your own you can get the red chili pods and you can actually uh, make your own uh, there's easy directions on the chili pods that you can get at the store but I like these and I use the medium of course you got to have hatch. Now normally I get fresh hatch green chilies uh, from Hatch New Mexico. I get them sent in and from that I will roast them up and then I'll clean them up, dice them up and then I have a bunch in the freezer. I, I kind of hoard these things because they're really really good but we, we can get hatch green chilies down here in Key West or if we go to the mainland I get them up there and it does really well too. These are the hot ones so uh, they, are, they are hot. Um, but yeah, and they have mild as well. And then of course, the masa. And that's what we use to make the, the inside of it, kind of like the dough, if you want to call it that, the, the cornmeal that will go on the husks. And I'll do a really cool uh, demonstration on how to, how to set all that up for everybody. So again, a lot of it is using these ingredients. Um, for the pork, I always use like an onion. So in the red chili, I didn't use an onion, but if I use the green, the hatch green chili, uh, to make hatch green chili tamales, I'll use some onions and put those in there along with those bad boys. I also get from New Mexico hatch chili, and it's ground chili, and it's really good, really good stuff to put in there. Of course, you see I got my garlic salt and pepper and just a lot of the good ingredients. So, um, kind of get an idea. Again, a lot of it's just for taste. You know, what do you like? How, how spicy do you want it? How salty do you want it? Um, I do use a, a chicken broth. I can make my own chicken broth. 
or I use a little bit of chicken broth you know, that you can get at the store. We always get low sodium because we, we try to watch our salt intake. Um, but it gives you a real good idea. There's some Cervantes red chili. Um, if you look up here in my cupboard, we have another one. Let me reach way up there. Here's another good substitute. It is Cervantes flame roasted chopped green chili. And those are really good to use too, and I've done those in the past. Cook right over here on that stove. And uh, so again, you kind of get an idea of some of the stuff that we're using. And go right back to the, that's the main guy right there, that, that half green chili. That's some uh, good uh, masa right there. I'll show you, it, it's very difficult to work with, but once you once you figure it out, it's, it's really good. Corn husks, kind of give you an idea. I got those from our local grocery store, but I also get them on, on Amazon. So. Again, kind of the main ingredients. It, it's not really difficult. It may seem difficult, but that's what we use, the hatch. I use a little bit of Cervantes right out of New Mexico. Easy, you can order one line. So we'll get ready here shortly, and we will start to put that tamale together with the masa. You'll see how I mix it, and you'll see how I actually will put it in a corn husk. So there you go. Okay, so we made some masa. Um, basically, I used the Maseca, which is some really good stuff. I bought this because we ran out of stuff down here in Key Pond. West. It's called Pam. Pond. Pond. Pam, Pam, whatever. I like, I don't really like using this as much as I like using this one, so I've kind of mixed these two. I put together a mixture here with the broth that I used from cooking with the, uh, uh, the pork in last night. Um, let me give you a little idea of what that looks like. Here it is. That's the broth from last night. I had 42 ounces that I put together, and I just kind of eyeball, I eyeball putting the, ma the masa mixture together. I save a little bit of that because I'm going to use that from this little bowl for my also finger. Used, uh, You'll see that um, when making the masa. I always add a little bit of extra pepper, garlic salt, some hatch green chili pepper. Okay. Also use garlic powder, right? I use a little bit of garlic powder in there as well. And you had some uh, vegetable oil, right? Yes, I added vegetable oil right here, just about, maybe about a, a cup, cup and a half, maybe two at the most. I wouldn't go any more than two. And then the consistency that we get is kind of... You said like... What do we say between cookie dough and cake batter? Yeah, between cookie dough and, and cake batter, because you'll see how that'll that'll spread out very nicely on the corn husk. So that gives you an idea. Now, when you're making this the masa up for the tamale, the first thing you do is get get your husks, put them in water, get them saturated. Show them the bag of the husks. Get them get them really soggy. I use these. I got them locally here. Um, I had to get some recently on Amazon because they ran out down here. They stopped carrying it. So, here comes the part of putting that tamale together. Get yourself a little, kind of about the size of your palm. And again, it's going to vary based on the size of your corn husk. This is a saturated corn husk. It's very easily movable versus the dry one that is going to break and just not do its job. That's wet. So you put a ball kind of right in the middle, all right? This is where this juice comes in. You get a little bit of that broth because it helps to push out. And all you're doing is pushing it out because you want it thin. You don't want a thick uh, you want too much masa. tamale. You don't want too much masa in there because then you know, you're eating more masa than you are the actual meat. And you just kind of work it around. Use a little bit of that broth in there. Kind of push it. Get it kind of thin. If you need to add a little bit more, you can take a little bit more out of your pan over here. And But the, the key is, is just to get it flat, make it look really good. So that's that's not bad. That's pretty good. Can I can leave about at least an inch on each edge of the... Yeah, yeah you can. I mean, there's, there's times I've gone a little bit further because even when you wrap it, it's going to do its job. Now, here's the fun part. You're taking the pork, or chicken. Mm -hmm. or chicken, or beef, or whatever you're making your tamale with. You can do beans and cheese too. And so, 
You don't want to get too much in there because it gets kind of hard to close. I like making mine kind of meaty. That's what people down here in Key West are like. And that's why I started making them here in Key West because the problem we were having is going out to places and not to say that it wasn't a good tamale, but the Cuban tamales are just, they're much thinner. They're more masa than they are meat. So here's the trick. You got it right in here. So you take it and you kind of squeeze it together a little bit and you take this one end and you kind of get underneath it a little bit. Then you fold it from behind, you roll it, and there you go. I'll do it one more. I'll do a couple more of these just so you get kind of get the idea. So it looked like you had about half as much meat as masa maybe all together? Yeah, yeah. So here we are. We're rolling it. Get like yourself a little ball. Slap it in there. And, and that's, that's a big size, but this is kind of a big wrap. So I want to take advantage of as much of the corn husk as I can. I like to give my customers who buy these from us an opportunity to enjoy it with the meat, the masa, the whole nine yards. So you just see how I'm just kind of just pushing that out, rolling it out with my fingers. They have little devices out there that you can like slide it and all that, but you know what? This is just as good, just as easy. There, see how flat that is? Kind of nice right there. All right, now we're gonna take the meat. We're gonna slap it in there, kind of spread it out just a little bit. Now I've made bean tamales before, bean and uh, cheese, green chili, and they're tough. Because if you put too much bean in there, you gotta get the bean consistency just right. You have to have to have it thick, but when you go to put it together like I'm doing, the beans start squeezing everywhere. So you gotta be really, really, they're fun to make, but you gotta be very cautious. So just see how I, see how I kind of roll that up underneath there a little bit, fold this back in, and then you roll it, and you put it right there. Now, I wanna show you something, because sometimes you get kind of a rogue corn husk. And what do you do? You know, especially when you don't want to waste a corn husk. So, got my ball, got it all rolled up in here. I got it slapped in here. You can see it. Look how I got it right there in the middle, right in the middle of that. So it's like a little narrow one. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm going to do is kind of show you when you come up with little issues. Sometimes you go to roll this thing and it breaks on you, or it doesn't want to stay shut. What do you do? And remember, when you're pushing this out, use this broth over here, that little extra broth you got, because this helps that tamale. It helps that masa spread out much even, evener. Is that a, even that a word? Yeah. Evener? More even. <laughs> More even. Lee. Evenly. So pretty much the, probably the oil from the broth kind of helps it. It does. Some now, more. there you go. So what I want to do is... And this, I probably won't have a problem with this one, but I'm gonna show you something that you can do. You got your meat in there. That's pretty good size meat. Roll it like I showed you. So again, bring the edges together, slide one in down, roll this one up from, from behind, and then use the other side to hold it. Now, if you run into an issue, and you will, because I do all the time, where it won't stay shut especially when you're doing the beans. This is where this kind of stuff comes in. See how that, it's messed up, but you can pull this off like so, and take yourself an end. And if you don't get the first one right the first time, roll it up underneath it. You can always grab more if you need it. You can use cooking string too. You can use cooking string, but you know what, this is, Inexpensive. And look how it holds that tamale together, right there. So that's helpful. That's when you have a, one of those rogue corn husks. So going in here, grabbing another one. That's a really good one right here. We know we can make. Now I could actually cut that in half if I wanted to, and I probably could. You know what? Let me show you. We're going to cut that one in half because it gives you an opportunity to use as much 
as you can because they do they do get hard to find. Roll my ball in there, kind of slide it around. And this one might be one of those examples where I might have to tie it together. It's a little smaller than the ones I've been working with, but it's a good way to say, hey, I used as much of that corn husk as I could. Got it all spread out, looking good. Take our meat, slab it in there. As such. So I know I'm going to have to use my little tie on that one. Kind of short, but roll that in there like such. Fold that end. Now, see where I don't really have a whole lot of the corn husk going around? Perfect for me to take one of these, come in here like so, and tie it together. So now I don't have to worry about it falling apart. It's holding that in. And it's going to be the perfect tomorrow. So that's how you kind of wrap those things. Um, here in a minute, I'm going to show you how we start steaming them. And we'll talk about that process. And I'm going to roll probably about three, three and a half dozen, maybe four dozen right here. So we'll be back shortly with showing you how to steam these guys up. So thank you. Okay, so now we've got all the tamales rolled. Let's see, there's one dozen, two dozen, and seven more. So what? Two and a half dozen plus one. So next, we got to steam these guys. So they're all rolled up. They're ready to go. I got my steamer on. Got a little pot here. So basically, what I'm going to do is put these in here like so. And I'm going to get all of these wrapped tightly in here. Now I'll steam these for about 30 minutes. I don't think I'm going to get all of these in here. So I'll end up having to like do another batch once I get these done uh, for steaming. I, no, I don't think I'll get them all in here. But basically, here's what happens. We get them all in. We'll steam them for about 30 minutes. And then we'll let them sit for about 10 or 15, because they get pretty hot. So I just kind of like let them kind of cool off a little bit, and then I'll put them on a plate. And then they will be able, at that point, to be put in your seal bags or whatever. So that's pretty good right there. And I'll bring these all the way over here to where on my oven. There they are. Put the top on that like so. Crank it up right there. Crank her up. Let that steam for about 30 minutes. Pull them out. And then what I'll do is, is when they're ready to come out, I'll show you what they look like. And then you have an idea of how they steamed up. So having said all that, we'll be back shortly once these are all steamed. Alright, so we've got the last batch in right now being steamed. Um, just as a side note, I made some pork green chili stew. Maybe I'll teach you all how to make that if anybody's interested. So you can see steaming right now. Let's show you what we got. These are what came out. These are the ones that are steamed and ready to go. We're going to have Michelle grab one. Okay, Michelle. Yay, she's gonna tamale. grab all the tamales. All right. So the husk is merely for preparation. You don't need the husk. <laughs> you don't need the husk. What you do, see where the masa is? So if it's done well, it should just come out easily, but if not, you can scrape it with the fork. Now mind you that these just came out of the steamer. Look, so, look how good that came out of it. Yeah, just a couple little extra pieces there. Yeah. Now mind you, these, these just came out. Throw your husk away or we're on a toilet paper shortage, you can... But there yeah, you these just, just came out, so they might still be a little tacky. Um, at first, you know, sometimes you might want to let them sit for about, a, you know, maybe an hour, maybe a half hour. Um, but some people like them steamed straight away. Yeah, some people like them steamed. Now, what you can do is with these, you can go ahead and make the rest of what you're doing there, Michelle. But what you can do is, uh, you, you Actually, can... I'll show you how I'm prepared with the worst. Oh yeah, you 
put these in the freezer and you can freeze them and do all a lot of cool stuff with the children if you want more. Oh look at that one coming out. That's perfect. Perfect. I made some yellow rice. You can use Mexican rice or Spanish rice. Yellow rice. Just got a little side for it. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks good. I'm also going to pour it. You still have some rice in there. A little bit of cheese. Oh, a little bit. Of, we like the extra sharp cheddar, but you can put whatever Mexican cheese you want on there. We do have some green chili. Like, like I said, I made, I made a big old pot of green chili. I'm getting ready to send some. I take one over to to our friend Dee Dee Green. I put some in some jars for him, and I guess I'll pass for Terry and her family. Let them try it out. And then I still have some more right there. I may go ahead and put jars, but we'll look at this. So, a little bit of green chili. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks that there looks awesome. Go. Beautiful. So anyway, that's what you do. That's how we do our, our tamales. You can do uh, chicken green chili. You can do pork green chili. You can do beef green chili. You can do beef red chili. You can do it without the meat. You can do it without the meat. I've done the beans and uh, cheese with green chili. So, but I'm saying even the chili you're making, you probably do it without meat. So anyway, there are lots of cool things you can do with these. Uh, I go crazy here in Key West. A lot of people like them. But you can see, look, look how good that looks. That's smothered in that gravy. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope um, if there's anything else I can answer or questions, whatever, just let me know. I'm happy to try and answer. But very easy to make them. Um, I made these and probably prep and everything in about two hours. So didn't take very long at all. Um, so enjoy, guys. This is B Man and Michelle cooking at the Beachy Shell Hideaway here in Key West, our kitchen. So we hope you enjoy it. And show me your tamales when you get a chance, when you get them all made up. We'd love to see it. There's a Christmas tree in the background, so. All right, everybody. Enjoy, Michelle. I'll be joining in a minute.